In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create reusable graffiti and how to apply it to a surface. So the first thing we want to do is grab the type tool and then we're going to create some graffiti. So let's just click with the type tool and type in graffiti. Now the font I'm using is Tags Extreme, which is available for free at DA Font for personal use. And I'll drop a link to that font underneath. Of course, you can use your own font and let's make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to hit the move tool, control T, command T, and I'm just going to drag this out to make the font a little bit bigger. Great. So now we're going to apply some different layer styles to it. So let's go under the layer effects where it says FX. And the first thing we want to do is apply a gradient overlay. So we're going to click gradient overlay. And under the gradient, we're going to click on the little arrow that goes down and then we're going to go grab the gradient we want. So you want to go under the legacy gradients. Now, if you don't see legacy gradients, go under window and then choose the gradients panel. Under the gradients panel, choose the menu. And then you'll see the option that says legacy gradients. Click on that and that will add them as simple as that. But what you want to do is go down to this one here. And this is kind of an orange yellow kind of a gradient. All right, let's modify this gradient. So click on the gradient. And what we want to do is we want to add white in the middle and have a little bit of yellow on both sides. So let's move the yellow off to the left a little bit. It moves it down on our type. All right, we want to add something in the middle. So see where we see an eyedropper move underneath. You see a finger, click once, adds a new stop. Now this is going to be the same color as the previous stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this off to the side. This is the fastest way to duplicate it. And now we're going to go back to the middle and I'm just going to click. And now we've added a third stop. And of course they all use the same color. This time I'm going to change this to white. So where it says color, click on there, choose white. And you can see now it's applying to the gradient. If you want to change the way it blends, just drag these off to the side here. And you can see you can change that by the way. Another way to duplicate that color stop, if we added the white stop, would be to hold down the outer option key and we can drag out a copy of that color stop. So that's a way to perfectly duplicate that color. All right, let's hit the OK. So we've got the first step, we've got our gradient applied. So now we want to add an outline. Let's go under stroke, click on stroke. You'll notice we see a thin black outline is what we've got by default. Let's change that. Click on color. And then we're going to choose a grayish kind of a tone. And mid gray is pretty good. In this case, that's 65 brightness. Click OK. Make sure position is set to outside. And now we want to change that size. Let's make it a bit bigger. Now you can eyeball this to however, you know, however thick you want this to be. In this case, I don't want to go too much. I'm thinking about there looks pretty good. And that's about 10 pixels for this particular one. All right, I want to add a second outline to this and I want to do a black one. So here's the thing in the layer style, if you want to have an additional stroke, just hit the plus button and now we'll have two of those. Now they're going to be identical. So what we want to do is take the one underneath because we want this to be larger and showing through, change the color from gray to black. You can't see it yet, but if we change the size, you will. As we increase that size, look at that. Now we've got that double stroke. Now there's one other thing I want to add on here, and that's a hard shadow. So we want to go under the drop shadow. We turn that on. And I'm just going to reset to default so I can show you the settings that we need to use. So we want to make sure the blend mode is multiply. Opacity is all the way up to 100. Now we're going to come back to the distance in a little bit. Let's just turn it up just a little bit for now, but we're going to take the spread. We're going to take that up really, really high. And then we're going to take the size and then just add a little bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, as far as the distance, now we can change the angle by just dragging on the angle here and dragging out the distance. So let's keep that kind of back a little bit. All right. Okay. So we're going to add that to about the size there and we're going to click. Okay. 
All right, so we've got the first part. Now, what you want to do is you want to save this as a layer style so you can reuse it. And in fact, I'll provide the layer style for you in a downloads link. So what we're going to do is choose window. And then under the window, let's go under styles. Now under the styles here, we just hit the plus and you'll see a new style, we'll call it graffiti. All right, let's apply this in a realistic way to an image. I'm gonna hide this layer and underneath I've got a subway car, we're gonna drop it on there. And by the way, this is one of my earlier tutorials I did. It was originally as a written tutorial I did many years ago and I've just for the first time adapted this into a video and obviously updated it. Let me know in the comments underneath if you'd like me to go back into some of my other legacy tutorials that I haven't done videos and make videos out of those as well. And by the way, guys, if you like this, do me a favor, hit that like button. Helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. All right, let's apply this to this subway cart. It's actually going to be super easy. What we want to do is just position it. I'm going to hit Control T, that's Command T on the Mac. And that brings up Free Transform. And I'm just going to scale this and why don't we just put it down in this area here. And now we're going to apply it. All right, so why don't we right click on this and we're going to convert it to a smart object. So we're just going to right click, convert to a smart object. Everything here is now in one layer. And if we want to blend it in, we can just go through here and just change the blending modes. Let's choose an overlay blending mode. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to duplicate this, Control J. And then I'll put the top one into a soft light. And so we're actually adding the two layers in different blending modes just to give us a little bit more of a realistic result. Now, if you wanted to take this further, you can use a displacement map. And I actually just did a tutorial on it, so I'm linking to it right there. Check out how you can do that so you can actually wrap it around different objects and that would give you a result like this. So until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.